welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubani Gharat. Before we begin the show, I have very exciting news to share. Storyboard 18's The Visionaries is here. It aims to honor the brightest and the most innovative marketing minds in the country. Visionaries are women and men scripting some of the most exciting chapters in Indian marketing, media and advertising. They are marketing leaders with responsibility for a category, brand or innovation-led practice within their organization. They are the ones who exhibit purposeful approach to building sustainable businesses and enduring brands. So get ready for a night that inspires and enlightens you and let's celebrate the sharpest minds in brand marketing. When you let ideas lead you to the cutting edge. When you turn insights into innovations and use creativity to shape brands with purpose. You become a visionary. An initiative by Storyboard 18. A night brimming with thought-provoking dialogues and celebrating the sharpest minds in brand marketing. October 27th at 6.30pm in Gurugram. Moving on, after over four decade old innings at Ogilvy in various creative and leadership roles, one of India's top admin, Piyush Pandey, Chairman Global Creative and Executive Chairman of Ogilvy India, will move to an advisory role at the agency from January. Along with this announcement, the agency has also announced a new leadership transition. In his role now, Pandey will continue to work closely with major clients and the agency's executive team to ensure that Ogilvy India maintains its important leadership role in the country. Along with the leadership team, he will be involved with key Ogilvy clients and new business prospects and the creative product of the agency. Storyboard 18 caught up with Piyush Pandey and Ogilvy's global CEO Devika Bulchandani to find out more. Ogilvy India has announced a leadership transition. To tell us more, we are joined in by Devika Bulchandani, global CEO Ogilvy and also Piyush Pandey who will take on the role as their chief advisor. Welcome to CNBC TV 18. Devika, uh, if I'm looking at the structure first, can you dissect the new Ogilvy India structure for us? We're talking about a leadership team that's been here for collectively, I think we counted over 140 years. 140 years. Collectively. So the people who've grown up here and who have been in leadership positions um, already. And for the last four, four to five years, I think Piyush and I have been talking about this for a while. They've sort of been doing the job, right? While Piyush has been here, obviously. Um, in his role. So Heps, Hepsibha Patak, who's going to become our executive chairman. Uh, VR Rajesh, who's going to become the CEO. Uh, Sukesh, Harshad and Kainas, who've been our chief creative officers, are going to lead the country from a creative perspective. Prem, who's uh, the head of planning, uh, is going to continue that role. But together, we're, they're also going to become part of the board. And I think what's really, really interesting to me about this is that we have a board where three of the members of the board are creative leaders. Because it's our belief that creativity is not a department, it is our business. So having that seat at the table and having the creative voice go broader than just the work that we do, but be involved in how the business is run is super important. And by the way, Piyush has done that in his role and for... I, and I like the way in which you say that creativity is not a department, but it is uh, the business. Also, as you pointed out, and this is very interesting to me as well, is that the existing leaders are given, you know, a seat at the board. Uh, the existing leaders within Ogilvy India have been promoted. Uh, were you tempted to get, uh, you know, somebody from the outside or... Not for a second. Not for a second. Not Zero. for a and second. And it's kind of nice because, you know, in an era where you see agencies, you know, looking for somebody from the outside. Well, I'm sure there's every other agency that's been talking to them to be the fresh perspective. <laughs> so we yeah. often forget <laughs> that the people we have, right, are fresh for somebody else. And then we think they're not fresh for us. Sure. Right. So we had zero... Uh, I, I don't even think it was... No, we, we didn't even discuss it. We, it was almost even... like when. Yeah, it was a matter of timing yeah. more than it was a matter of who. Now, uh, speaking to you, Piyush, now moving to you, uh, you're taking uh, an advisory role going forward starting January 2024. I'm sure you must have spoken to some of the long-standing clients with whom you've had long-standing partnership uh, at Ogilvy for years. How are they reacting to it? They're quite happy that I'm around somewhere. <laughs> 
no um fantastic because half of them know these people they work with them and they've all responded by saying what a good choice uh the response from everyone has been fantastic the response from our own people yesterday has been superb as if it was obvious and um, by and large they're happy that uh, i'm not going away to the himalayas i'm here right at ogilvy uh, you've been here for more than four decades at you know for somebody who spent so much time in the uh, in the industry uh, can you uh, like you know at any point in time did you feel ki yaar bas ho gaya abhi nahi nahi kar sakte kai baar hame bhi lagta hai aur hame to ek ek decade hi hua hai to did you did you feel <laughs> ki <laughs> ek baar laga tha thoda uh on a difference on a point of view yeah and then i went home and i said but why am i thinking of leaving the other guy should leave <laughs> it's my place <laughs> did he leave or did he stay no no he didn't need to leave it was a difference of opinion we played yeah. it the next morning but otherwise no hmm. i've um, been fairly nasty with those who um were bold enough to offer me a job hmm. and um, no never hmm. it's a um, home for me hmm. Hmm. there was no question you know mark was here like just 2 weeks week, ago yeah. yeah just 2 weeks ago and i just met him in this very room devika and uh, he says very clearly that india is one of the fastest growing markets for wpp what does it mean for ogilvy so india is one of our top 5 markets and it's a growth market for us it's a market where our creative product is the best but one thing you all probably know is our creative product is you know Ogilvy and Piyush and Heps and Sukesh and Kainaz and Harshad, but we have over a thousand people in Coimbatore and Hyderabad. That's our tech team, mm. which is our tech delivery team for the rest of the world, um, where where we run campaigns, whether it's on Salesforce and Adobe. So India for us is a twin peaks mm. of of a growth agenda. So mm. from a creative and perspective that we know. um that you all very familiar with but also from a tech and enablement perspective mm-hmm. right so it's a big priority for me and i'm not at all biased when i say that um <laughs> uh, uh but it's also the jewel in our crown mm-hmm. so it's not just because when we land up on the global stage mm-hmm. india performs for us consistently mm-hmm. a lot of markets will come up and down but one thing i know that when we're on a global stage India will be consistent in its creative performance. Uh Piyush this industry has been going through people's crisis in terms of attracting the right kind of talent and you're somebody who's known to nurture uh you know talent within the agency to give them that push to uh you know uh, like uh, probably uh, create the talent to become like the next leader to take on that leadership role. what would be your tip to the cco trio which is there uh, you know taking on you already know it see you don't create you give the opportunity they all creative people therefore you went and hired them they have the talent half the people in the industry have a problem that you call them to play in the best place and then you curtail them and the will be way that we work is that come on and play this is the best ground to play not play your shots yep. so backing them giving the opportunity and their own satisfaction with the kind of work that comes out of this place is what retains them new people are a little difficult because that's a new generation thinking of 10 things at the same time so it's our endeavor to try and find two of the 10 who are good enough and who are, who are interested in your business and over the years what uh, is it about this industry that you have learned about the advertising industry the way in which it has evolved that have you learned as a creative leader i think uh, it's only reinforced my thinking that uh, a lot of the industry not all believe that they are working for themselves and my belief from day one has been that i don't work for clients i don't work for brands i work for the people it reaches if that is your starting point then you will make a difference a lot of stuff that i've seen reinforces that view of mine that some people are chasing their own tail and never ever do it 
that's that's the learning otherwise they're good people everywhere no no doubt about that thank you so much thanks for joining us today thank you thanks a lot keep thank running you, yes. <laughs> it is time for a short break on the other side we have badri berival chief strategy and business development officer bata india speaking about how they are making bata relevant to the young indian consumer of today their expectation from the festive season and focus moving forward As India enters the festive mode, Bata has launched their new campaign, which is rooted in the insight that anyone can feel like a celebrity. All they need is self-confidence and a stylish pair of shoes. And for this campaign, Bata has tied up with popular social media influencers as well. I'm catching up with Badri Berival, Chief Strategy and Business Development Officer, Bata India, who is speaking to us about how they are making Bata relevant to the young Indian consumer of today, their expectation from the festival. and focus moving forward badri welcome to cnbc tv 18 thanks shivani uh, badri let's begin this conversation first speaking about your new campaign which features influencers so tell us more and how did you uh, like think of engaging with the influencers for this campaign right so shivani i think uh, consumers today are uh, globally connected and um, highly style conscious right and uh, this season as we get into the festivity mode uh, we have come out with two collection one is city casual collection and second is celebration collection now both these collections are inspired by you know global style while we bring them uh, i think the idea was that how can we make every common man feel that they can be stylish and every per- person can be celebrity was the idea and we thought that you know the fact that uh, influencers are the new celebrities what a brilliant idea to you know take ce- influencers and uh, show them in a new avatar which they are typically not seen and make them as style models what is the kind of image or what is the kind of brand image that you want for bata going forward like how do you want bata to be perceived by your consumers today see uh, Bata has always stood for trust, uh, trust of the family. The fact that you get uh, amazing collection, the fact that you get uh, very comfortable uh, shoes, and the fact that you get them at a quite affordable price. Now, these are some of the values that Bata has always embodied. Hmm. The work that the team has been doing for quite some time now is to ensure that we are also seen as style forward. and that is where you know if you've seen our past campaign where we had a surprisingly bata uh, followed with now city casual collection and followed with celebration collection it harps on the fact that we are trying to bring in global style uh, to indian consumers across our network of 2100 plus stores yeah global style to indian consumers does that does that hint towards premiumization yeah i think uh, there is there is uh, uh, you know of course there is a set of consumers where we have to premiumize and offer solutions and uh, products which is at the premium end mm-hmm. and that's where you know our whole approach of bringing brands which are more and more attuned to these consumers is very relevant whether it's hush puppies or north star or comfit uh, or power right so bringing in global styles and uh, technology is one stream mm-hmm. and the other part is you know catering to large part of tier 2 tier 3 town of india as well mm-hmm. and that's where distribution and ensuring our accessibility is built is also an growth lever for us yeah uh, badri when it comes to uh, you know the strategy function in an organization it is typically the consumer's voice at the table so if you can tell us what does your consumer or what does the consumer of bata want from uh, the brand today i think uh, when we talk to our consumers one thing that definitely comes again and again and the reason why consumers uh, continue to shop with us is sheer range of product that they can get at one place hmm. the fact that you can get uh, most comfortable shoes uh, most reliable shoes at the right price i think these are some of the tenets that has held uh, bata together and the fact that now we are offering one of some of the most global styles and designs uh in in our brands 
is something that is further fueling our growth. Uh, since the onset of COVID, Athleisure is something that has really picked up and uh, you know, we have seen uh, most of the footwear brands really amping up their Athleisure uh, strategy, getting in sneakers. So, uh, what is uh, Bata's uh, strategy and approach there, Badri? So, uh, uh, Shivani, we have, uh, you know, if you look at in our portfolio, uh, two strong brands. Uh, one is Power and second is North Star. And these are uh, both global brands which are really strong in many countries. Now, we are, uh, you know, we have been present in India with these brands as well. But as there is, you know, sneakerization happening and casualization that is happening in the country, you've seen us uh, make efforts towards this by launch of our sneaker studio, where we have brought together all our, uh, you know, sneaker collection together in one wall for shoppers to choose from. Mm. Uh, having said that, what further we are doing is to bring in new styles, uh, uh, more global in nature, more attuned to youngsters, uh, more uh, of collection and designs that youngsters are looking forward to. Uh, that is something that you will see more from our stable. You will also see us investing behind some of these brands to make them more, uh, you know, uh, make them more known and make them more uh, you know, relevant in Indian market. Yeah. Badri, we are speaking in the thick of, uh, you know, the festival season. Uh, what are your expectations from uh, this festival uh, season, both from the urban and the semi-urban markets? All I can say is we are all ready. I mean, the fact that, you know, uh, we've got our new collection, uh, both casual and uh, celebration collection ready. We've got uh, 500 plus of our those refreshed before the festivities, which is important from the fact that, you know, when you have store aging, uh, you want to refresh and make sure that you put best foot forward for, you know, shoppers to walk in our stores. And uh, we are putting uh, big monies behind our campaign this season as well. Uh, big plans uh, and, you know, key focus areas going forward for Bata India Badri. Oh, Absolutely clear. Uh, continue to drive distribution, continue to drive our store expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an important uh, lever. Continue to build on our uh, power brands, ensure that brand relevance is built, uh, ensure uh, we make our brand more relevant for youth. I think these are the top three priorities. Okay. And uh, you mentioned uh, store expansion. So which uh, markets are you looking at, Badri? Uh, actually, uh, you know, while uh, growth in tier two, tier three cities is happening for sure, and we, we do see a lot of opportunity there, uh, both through our own store expansion and through MBOs, hmm. what is also important is the fact that there is a lot of growth happening within metros as well. Hmm. I mean, we all know how our cities are expanding. And as cities expand, it is important for brands to ensure that their presence is there in upcoming, you know, uh, new metropolitan areas as well. So we see opportunities all across and we continue to drive them. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for speaking to us today. Thanks a lot, Shibani. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Dipinder Rana, Executive Managing Director, South Asia Insights Division, Kantar, and Soumya Mohanty, Managing Director and Chief Client Officer, South Asia Insights Division, Kantar, speaking about their 2023 Kantar Brand Z Top 75 Most Valuable Indian Brands Report. Welcome back. Tata Consultancy Services or TCS has retained its number one position in the 2023 Kantar Brands Z Top 75 Most Valuable Indian Brands Report for second consecutive year with a brand value of 43 billion US dollar. HDFC Bank, Infosys and Airtel also hold on to their top four positions while State Bank of India rises one place to enter the top five. India's top 75 brands have a combined value of three. 379 billion US dollar, however, a decline of 4% from 2022, but a modest decrease given the ongoing economic volatility across markets in the world. To tell us more, we are joined in by Dipender Rana, Executive Managing Director, South Asia Insights Division, Kantar, and Soumya Mohanty, Managing Director and Chief Client Officer, South Asia Insights Division, Kantar. Uh, so, Dipendra and uh, Soumya, first, uh, you know, if you can share with us the key highlights of the report. Dipendra, let's begin with you and then Soumya, you can add on. Sure. So, the highlight is really the resilience of India and Indian brands. Uh, 
So they really held steady in tough times because, uh, you know, with the effect of inflation, war, interest rate increases, and, and the rest of the disruption, uh, the global brand values have dropped by, you know, 20%. But uh, India has held quite steady and uh, is only 4% down. So what has really protected us is the res resilience of the Indian domestic market because about 60% of the consumption comes from domestic demand. Sure. Uh, over to you, Soumya. Some of the interesting things that you spotted, uh, you know, while coming up with the 75 top Indian brands uh, list. I think the most interesting thing, Shivani, would be uh, what Rana was saying that uh, the continued uh, importance of investing in brand. Hmm. So it's clear that the brands that have held on to their equity, so the brands that we, we call it demand power, hmm. so the brands that have actually grown and uh, held on to their demand power are the ones that have uh, done better and have outperformed. And that's something we have been saying year after year after year. Uh, the need for investing in uh, in, in brands. And uh, the other important thing that I think uh, we are calling out this time particularly is the importance of uh, uh, maintaining uh, differentiation. Hmm. Uh, it's increasingly getting, I mean, the market is getting fragmented. They're, the entry barriers are reducing. There are a lot more players today than there were earlier. So it's, it's really important not just to be relevant, but also to be consistently building upon your differentiation. And that's what... Uh, Actually, that's what FMCG players have done very well. So while you will see it's uh, banking and uh, automotive and telecom that dominate, uh, <clears throat> FMCG has actually been pretty resilient uh, across the years. And that's one of the reasons is they have been able to uh, build differentiation in a consistent way. Yeah, and it's also incidentally 10 years of the Kantar uh, Brandzi report. I remember going uh, for this uh, launch event 10 years ago. Uh, I believe it happened at Four Seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. So, uh, Dipinder, if you can uh, share with us, uh, you know, how have, uh, you know, the trends evolved, you know, in shaping this right. uh, 75 top most Indian uh, valuable brands uh, list over the past 10 years and, uh, you know, what are the factors that contribute to the brand value? How have they changed over the past uh, 10 years? Right. So, uh, I think one is the contrast between India and the rest of the world. India has been a, you know, spectacular growth story. So, if you look at the value of the top uh, 50 Indian brands, it's gone up uh, five times almost, whereas our GDP has got, gone up about 80%. So, you could clearly see that brands are really uh, driving value creation in the economy at large and then you, i mean you do see as one moves from uh, you know just manufacturing or generic services in our case b2b services to much more of uh, i would say branded offerings which are differentiated that's what really creates uh, the value i mean when you assemble uh, an apple phone most of the value is still getting created in the us mm. You know, that's the reality. So that's the power of, of uh, branding hmm. uh, as opposed to just, uh, let's say, manufacturing uh, in India. And yeah, I think yeah. that's that's the transition India is beginning to make and uh, will uh, keep uh, making. Uh, so this, the other thing is globally, the top 50 have, or the top brands have grown only two and a half times, whereas India has grown you know, Indian top brands have grown five times. Hmm. So that just shows how much, you know, it's been India dec India's decade. And then, the, of course, the forecasts are that it will continue to be India's decade as we move towards 2030. Yeah. So it's a story of continued success. Maybe Soumya can talk a bit more yes, about... Yes, yes. And also the fact that how do, you know, these top 10 brands in this list, because everyone is talking about, uh, you know, the uh, India as a shining beacon. All the business leaders are... Uh, speaking about that. So, how do these top 10 brands add to this entire India growth story? So, I'll just add to the add to what Rana was saying in terms of what we have observed over the last decade. Hmm. And uh, there are actually two parts in which you can divide this period, the pre-COVID and the post-COVID. Hmm. So, if we look at the, the when COVID happened, and if we look at the period after that, the building blocks of what drives brand growth hmm. uh, shifted a bit. So it still remains the same. It's still brands need to be meaningful. They need to be differentiated. You need to know about them. But there are other factors like purpose, the commitment to sustainability, hmm. which were not even present uh, during the earlier times. There were other, other factors like trust and corporate responsibility, but they were, they were not as 
uh, as important mm -hmm. as they have emerged in the post-COVID period. Mm -hmm. And then that's the difference that is sort of continuing, even as we are seeing this rebound back uh, after COVID. So sure. to some extent, Shivani, it things have shifted. Consumers mm -hmm. are looking for brands that stand for something. Mm -hmm. So having said that, now if we come back to the 10 brands that... Uh, that are the top performers. I mean, what binds it up? They're across sectors. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have uh, B2B tech brands, we have uh, uh, BFSI brands, and we have Airtel, which is a telecom brand. So they are cross-sectoral. Mm -hmm. What is remarkable about them is most of them have remained as uh, consistently across the 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they have been able to actually understand what their customer wants mm -hmm. and have been able to evolve mm -hmm. with time. And that, that's that's what is important. So from whether we are talking about digital banking, mm -hmm. whether we talk about the way Airtel has actually uh, gone beyond the price wars to remain consistent to uh, driving high value consumers and the kind of services they are looking for. So they have invested in their brand and they have remained consistent to uh, their, their strategy and therefore their purpose. I think that's what is common. Mm -hmm. And the consistency is actually remarkable across sure. these 10 brands and across the last decade. Sure, sure. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. It was a pleasure, Shivani. Pleasure. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.